Hi buddy, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to podcast 5.3. We're going to talk about types of bonding. Um, the electrons are shared in a sea of electrons, trading electrons and sharing electrons again. We're going to talk about the properties of different bonding types and the valence shell role in binding. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Ding! First type of bonding we're going to look at, I hope, oh come on now, is metallic bonding. Uh, metallic bonding is when you have a metal bonded to other metals or themselves. They do not form compounds. Okay, um, If it's formed with themselves, it's an element. If it's bonded to other metals, it's called an alloy, which is actually a mixture. Metallic bonding, metallic bonding occurs through non-directional covalent bonds. It's often called a sea of electrons. So what happens is we've got these electrons, you can't tell where they are, and it's kind of hanging out all over the place. So these electrons are negative, but they're attracted to the very positive nuclei here. So they hang out here because they're the all of these positive nuclei that it's like, oh, I like to be over here, I like to be over here, I like to be over here. And these positive nuclei stay here because like, oh, look at all these electrons, look at all these electrons, look at all these electrons. So it's pretty awesome and fun and wonderful. So they share with many atoms, okay? So share with, I should say share electrons, with many atoms. And the analogy I used is the stapler in the classroom. I share the stapler with everybody. Oh look, here's a stapler for Jaquan, here's a stapler for Francisco, here's a stapler for Jennifer, here's a stapler for Nicole, and they're all there. Here's a picture of metallic bonding, so notice how the electrons are kind of all over the place. Um, Picture B here shows the conductivity of electricity. So metals, properties of metals, so metallic properties, let's list them out. They are good conductors. of electricity and heat. That's one of the properties. So notice electrons, these negative things, if I have a positive end over here, the electrons can flow right through, flow right through, flow right through, because they're free to move. Okay. So this picture shows the good conductivity of electricity. For heat, heat is the ability to shake. Well, if they can shake, they're not locked in place. These electrons can bounce around and go through these things, so they're good conductors of electricity and heat. And if I take a hammer, kathunk, and move them, the electrons just adjust and change their shape a little bit too, so they are malleable. The other part that helps with this is because the electrons are able to move so much, if you add energy like light to them, they will then reflect that, the electrons will reflect that energy back, and they are lustrous. Okay, so they're lustrous, meaning shiny. Okay, so there's the properties of metals. Did you get that? Did you write that down? Put an arrow towards that? Those are the properties of metals. Variable bond strength, which variable melting and boiling points, good conductors of heat and electricity, malleable and luster, and that is the only ones you should have to add. Ionic and covalent bonds are sorted by electronegativity. We did this a little bit before. Electronegativity is the ability to attract a bonded electron. If an atom is very electronegative, it pulls the electrons all the way off of the other atom. Okay. Uh, again, I'm ditching the word trade. I apologize. Let's call it transfer. So if these two people are friends, friends, quotes, and this is a bully that takes it, that's sharing, but not sharing evenly. So that would be a transfer of attractive purses. Ionic to covalent is a continuum. You should know this. So you've got nonpolar covalent that goes to polar covalent that goes to ionic. Um, notice the difference is zero ish. It's nonpolar. This is up to 0 0.4. Whoops. 0 0.4. And then at 2.0 and up, it's ionic. And remember, we're focusing on ionic this go around. Ionic bonds. Ionic bonds have high bonding energies. The positive is attracted to negative. That's called electrostatic attraction. It's basically the Mac Daddy charge of everything. Positives attract negatives, and negatives attract positives. It's reflected in high melting temperatures, so that means that they're solids at room temperature usually. They're hard um, and brittle materials. They are electrical and thermal insulators. They conduct electricity as a liquid only or aqueous, I'll add that, aqueous. And it's a metal and a nonmetal bonded together. 
and they have a big electronegativity difference. Electrons are transferred and they are mostly soluble in water. Okay, So these are the properties you need to contrast to the metals that we had earlier. Nonpolar covalent bonds, this is review but it is still on the test to go through it. So nonpolar means that you are shared evenly. Okay, Most commonly it's diatomic but it's 0.4 and less. Right? They have the lowest melting point and boiling point. They never conduct electricity and they are poor heat conductors and they're insoluble in water. Soluble means it dissolves. Polar covalent, again it's a review but it's on test. Two nonmetals that share unevenly. The word polar means ended. Okay, so they share unevenly. There's a negative end and a positive end. The difference in electronegativity between two atoms is greater than 0.4 but less than 2.1. They have uneven sharing. Again, they have low melting and boiling points, but bigger than nonpolar covalent, but they are soluble in water. So that's the big difference there is they're soluble in water between polar and nonpolar. Again, metallic is a commune of sharing, but covalent shares with only one partner. So this would be metallic. Oh well. This one, notice, I guess this made me hop back here, but notice this is sharing. These electrons are shared with only two atoms. A is sharing with B, or actually H is sharing with Cl. I wonder why this went backwards. So metallic is a commune of sharing, but covalent shares with only one. So to make this a little bit different, it would be positive. Well, let's just call it A. This is covalent. And these are the electrons. Notice the electrons here are shared by everybody. Whose electron does this belong to? You can't even really tell. So why do things bond at all? Stability occurs when valence shell is full. Okay, And bonding lowers the energy. There's two reasons why you bond. So if you look at sodium, sodium has one valence electron right here. And if it gives it to chlorine, chlorine has seven. Chlorine will be full. Eight is typically full. And so when this happens, you get full. So seven goes to eight. And this is weird because one goes to eight. Notice how this one goes away. Notice now I have two, four, six, eight. Okay, And bonding lowers energy. So why don't noble gases react? So noble gases are full. They have everything that they want. They have money. They have power. They have pictures in the press. And they have rage that is accepted. So why do they react? Because they are full. Right? They are so full that they won't react with you. If you said, hey, Princess Kate, I would like to say hi to you. She'll keep walking. Doot, 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 doot. If you said, Prince, I don't know, is this Harry or Charlie or whatever it is, I don't know who they are. Um, will you talk to me? No. They're full. They're stable. They don't need you. So to review. Metals have an electron C that describes all of their properties. Covalent shares evenly or unevenly. Ionic trades, again, I'm getting rid of the word trades, not the word we use anymore. Transfers. Properties can determine the type. Electronegativity can determine type. Type of atom can be determined type. To be insoluble in water, you must be polar or ionic. And that is it. So I will say, toodles. <laughs>